In this video, I'll show you how to use the laws of exponents to simplify an expression. This is part one of the series. There are several rules that are helpful when working with exponential functions, and they are listed below. And it doesn't hurt to memorize these. The better you get with the laws of exponents, the quicker you'll be able to answer the questions. Let's start with question number one. Question number one asks, simplify using exponent laws. You'll notice that there are two variables being used here, both x and y. So we'll start off by distributing this negative one to the x and this three to both the x and the y. Here's what I mean by that. x to the power of five to the power of negative one applies to this rule right here, which says that if you have a power to a power, the power gets multiplied. So here you have x and y. In our case, we have x to the power of 5, and that is power to negative 1. So that becomes x to the power of negative 5, because 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And everything else stays the way it is. Similarly, at the bottom, we have x to the power of 3 and y to the power of 3, because that 3 gets distributed to each individual element, and everything else remains the way it is. Oftentimes you'll notice that as you do these questions, it does take several steps until you figure out the simplified version. The next step is to combine all the similar variables at the top and at the bottom. For example, at the top, the numerator, we have these two x's, and they are being multiplied together. Imagine this y didn't exist. You would be multiplying this with this. And we know that when you multiply two variables that are the same, you use the product rule and in that case, you add the exponents. So I'm going to add negative 5 and 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is equal to negative 3. And this y stays the way it is. And at the bottom, we'll do the same thing. We'll concentrate on the x's individually, and we'll concentrate on the y's individually. So I'll add all the exponents for the x's first. And if I do that, I have x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 4, which is x to the power of 7. And y to the power of 3, y to the power of 5, and y to the power of 6, if you add the 3, 5, and 6 together, because they are being multiplied, you end up with y to the power of 14. This looks a lot more simple than it did originally. Let's continue. You'll notice that you have an x at the top and x at the bottom. And in this case, you'll use the quotient rule, which is shown right here. And it says that if the bases are the same, you will subtract the exponents. So let's subtract negative 3 from 7. Negative 3 minus 7 is equal to x to the power of negative 10. Think about it. Negative 3 minus 7 is equal to negative 10. And also, y to the power of negative 3 over y to the power of 14 means negative 3 minus 14, which is y to the power of negative 17. And there you have it. There is the simplified version of this expression. Now your teacher might not like the fact that you're using negative exponents, and if that's the case, you can always change this so that it looks like this. This becomes 1 over x to the power of 10, and this becomes 1 over y to the power of 17. Combining these two give you 1 over x to the power of 10, y to the power of 17. So either one of these will work. Let's move on to question number two. In question number two, they're asking us to simplify this expression. 7 to the power of 3x times 7x plus 1 over 7 to the power of 2x plus 5. Let's start off with the top. You'll notice that the bases are the same. And because the bases are the same, and because these two are being multiplied, you will be adding the exponents. So in our case, we have 3x, which is the exponent of this part, plus this part x plus 1. And this gives us 4x plus 1 as your final exponent for the top. So we have essentially 7 to the power of 4x plus 1. And at the bottom, that stays the way it is. I'm just going to rewrite that. And for our next step and our last step, we will use the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says that if the bases are the same, and they are, you will be subtracting the exponents. So let's do this up here. 4x plus 1, and do not make this mistake. Make sure that when you subtract this from this, you put it in brackets, and if you don't, you'll get the wrong answer. So 4x plus 1 minus this part, you distribute the negative, and you end up with, collecting like terms, 4x minus 2x is equal to 2x, 
and 1 minus 5 is equal to minus 4. And therefore, your final answer becomes 7 to the power of 2x minus 4. Let's continue on to question number 3. Question number three asks us the same thing. They want us to simplify using exponent laws. In this case, you have an exponent at the very outer part of the expression. This means you will be distributing this to both the top and the bottom. So here's what I mean. 3 to the power of 4x to the power of 3 and 2x to the power of 3. To do this, you're going to use this rule right here which suggests that if you have a power to a power, they multiply. So we end up with 4x to the power of 3, which is 12x. Notice that this stays the way it is. And x times 3 is 3x. And notice that the bases now are not identical. They're not the same. So that's all you can do. You cannot further simplify this expression. And there you have it. Three examples on how to use the laws of exponents to simplify expressions. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at studyforce.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.